I love watching animal movies on television. And they always say, don't run away and don't turn your back and don't lie down flat. And I love, it's from my childhood. How do you prevent dying? How do you prevent being eaten or mauled by a monster? I still worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think there is something barbaric in children and it's missing in lots of books for them because we don't like to think of it. We want them to be happy. And childhood is a very tough time. It was for me and it was for my brother and my sister. And they were both considerably older than I was and they protected me from my parents. They were the good parents and my real parents were not so good, okay? They didn't mean any harm. They were confused, they didn't speak English, living in a foreign country, and take it out on your kids, that's all. But there are a lot of crazy people who have children, and I've always been interested in how children maneuver and decide how to live. It's hard. I've always had a deep respect for children and how they solve complex problems by themselves. And how do they? I think through shrewdness, fantasy, and just plain strength, they want to survive. They want to survive. Like the kids in Hansel and Gretel, Gretel, she saves her brother's life. And a little girl saving a little boy's <laughs> life. When do children have to confront such terrible ordeals? Well, they do, they do. Just a broad question, what, you know, what should children's stories contain? Well, how would I know? All I do know is that my parents were immigrants and they didn't know that they should clean the stories up for us. So we heard horrible, horrible stories and we loved them. We absolutely loved them. But the three of us, my sister, brother, and myself, grew up to be very depressed people. <laughs> So the great thing was my brother, who wrote stories and I illustrated stories. There was one story called, We Are Inseparable. And they're gonna get married. Brother and sister are gonna get married. And nobody knows that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> nobody, nobody. Hey, you love somebody. So it's your sister, big deal, okay? Now, obviously, Freud stuck into my brother's head at the last minute to prevent this wedding from taking place. <laughs> the boy is in an accident, I can't remember why, and he's bandaged, it looks like a mummy. And she comes tearing to the hospital, let me in, let me in! And the parents are holding her back, holding her back, and then she breaks down the door and she jumps on top of him. And they both scream in unison, we are inseparable. <laughs> And they wow. leap out the window of the Brooklyn Jewish Hospital, like the 40th floor. <laughs> and that's how it ended. It was a really happy ending. <laughs> Let's tell the truth. Let's talk about the kid who doesn't make it sensationally well, who struggles and fights but really doesn't know what he's fighting against or for. And I don't think that changes. We're all adults in this room sitting talking about, has that ended? No, it doesn't end. I still think the same way I thought as a child. I still worry, I'm still frightened. Everything is the same, nothing changes. <laughs>